Television is wonderful for many reasons. For one, it distracts us from the mundane elements of everyday life. Secondly, it brings people together and can become an experience that we like to share with others. Finally, it works just as well solo with many people loving nothing more than spending the evening alone in front of the box. As a result, TV means a lot to many people. We invest our lives into these shows, into these characters and the choices that they make. We spend hours upon hours binging episode after episode so we can spend a little more time away from the real world. So when it comes to the inevitable end, we want it to be good. Unfortunately, not every TV show manages to pull it off. We get it, the pressure is on you and you can't please everyone. Thankfully, there are those that do manage to deliver, providing their fans with an ending that they deserve. And so, I am Kirsten from What Culture, and these are 10 of the most satisfying TV endings. Number 10, Fleabag. Fleabag may have only run for two series, but in those 12 short episodes, the wonderful world of television changed for the better. For those who missed it, the show is centred around the character of Fleabag, played by the wonderful Phoebe Waller-Bridge, who also wrote it. Fleabag is a young-ish woman living in London and dealing with a whole host of complex relationships and grief. What made it stand out was Fleabag's habit of breaking the fourth wall and directly talking to the audience. This might initially seem like a turn-off, but instead it invited us into the world of a pretty awful human being who was simply just being human. In the end, the sex-mad fleabag develops real and actual romantic feelings for a hot priest. The end result doesn't work out for obvious reasons, but instead of going off the rails, she learns to live with it and continue on with her life. We then watch her talk to us one final time before walking away and instructing us not to follow. Number 9, Parks and Recreation. Is Parks and Recreation the best comedy of all time? Well, it certainly came close. The show lasted for a whopping seven seasons and introduced the world to a number of hilarious characters, all wacky and unique in their own way. However, it wasn't all laughs and giggles. Parks and Recreation had a real-life beating heart at the centre of its premise, which often made for some sweet and sentimental television. Take the finale, an ending that perfectly wrapped everything up in a neat and tidy parcel. It was sad, it was emotional, and it was difficult saying goodbye, but it was just what each character deserved. A simple, happy ending. The character development was one of the show's highlights. Each went from a bumbling caricature to a three-dimensional hot mess. Therefore, it seemed only fair that we got to bid farewell to them individually, considering how attached we were by the end. Number 8, Sons of Anarchy. Sons of Anarchy is centred around the violent motorcycling club Sam Crow, Sons of Anarchy Motorcycle Club Redwood Original. The show ran for a lengthy seven seasons and managed to become a cult favourite. Nobody was safe in Sons of Anarchy. It felt like two or three major characters died each season, all succumbing to violent and brutal deaths. That was the nature of the show. It was dark, it went to places other shows dared not. Therefore, it seemed only fitting that the finale went down the same path. In the end, the main character and somewhat redeemer, Jax, goes on a killing spree that results in his departure from the club and his supposed suicide. In truth, the only way to end a show based based on criminal activity, with a lead character who was obviously struggling with the role that he had been born into, was to kill him. We all knew that he would die eventually. After all, Sons of Anarchy was basically a modern Shakespearean tragedy. We were just glad it was on his own terms. Number 7, The Wire. The Wire was never going to have a conventional happy ending. It started savagely and ended just the same. All five seasons were soaked in crime, corruption, and life on the streets, so what would be the point in changing that? Life in Baltimore still goes on, right? Poverty doesn't just end because a TV show does. Sure, some things were left unanswered, like what on earth happened to Officer Massey? But all in all, it was tied up pretty well. The best thing about the finale was the montage. TV shows tend to stray away from montages, even though it is what the majority of audiences want. We want to know what happens in the future, where these characters end up and what's going to happen. Then we can switch off for good and get on with our lives instead of anxiously waiting for a reboot. Thankfully, The Wire did just that, letting us live peacefully with the knowledge that everybody got on with their lives too. Number 6, Scrubs. People forget how funny Scrubs was, especially in the early days. Admittedly, the last few seasons weren't quite on par with what they delivered early on, but there were still a few belly laughs throughout the later episodes. Scrubs actually has the prestigious award of having two finales, one that is considered the real finale and one that was the actual finale. 
the real finale came at the end of season 8 and was aptly named My Finale, as it was originally supposed to be the very last one. The episode follows JD around the hospital one last time, accompanied by flashbacks and final interactions with the people he worked with. At the time, nobody knew it was going to come back for one more season, so we all felt like it was the perfect farewell. As we know, there was another season that followed, but it's probably best to pretend that it never happened, and to instead concentrate on the season 8 finale instead. Number 5. The Sopranos The Sopranos was loved and adored all over the world, so the pressure to end it on a good note was high. It's difficult to please everyone when it comes to shows like The Sopranos. Everybody has their own perfect ending, so it can be really easy to mess it up. Looking at you, Dexter. The best thing about the ending was that it would have been infuriating if it had appeared on any other beloved television show, yet for some reason it just seems to work in the world of Tony Soprano. Everything is just so simple. We follow him to the diner, we watch him select the nice, iconic and annoying journeys don't stop believing, we watch as other members of the family arrive and we witness them eat. Then Tony suddenly looks up and the screen goes black. What happened? Who was he looking at? Surely there is another scene. At first, we were angry. How dare they do this to us after six long seasons? Then we realized that it couldn't have been more perfect. The is Tony dead or not question is still ongoing to this day, but if you've still got no idea, then you obviously haven't been watching properly. Number four, Star Trek The Next Generation. If they had got this wrong, then there would have been hell to pay. Thankfully, the writers and producers at Star Trek Studios managed to pull it out of the bag, pleasing Trekkies all over the world. At a whopping two hours long, fans felt that they had been gifted with the mothership of all finales, and they were right. Surely, all finales should just be two hours long. The second best thing is how Picard heavy the episode was. We all know Picard is the star of the show, so why not have the finale dedicated to the past, the present and the future of Captain Jean-Luc Picard? Finally, we are treated to one last game of poker and a game that Picard decides to join for the first time ever. He expresses his sadness at not joining in before and utters those immortal final lines. So, five card stud, nothing wild and the sky's the limit. Number 3, 30 Rock. The best thing about 30 Rock was that it stayed true to who it was. It wasn't about the character development or sweet and sentimental moments fused with comedy, it was more about who could make the best joke and who could deliver the best line. 30 Rock was full of hilarious actors, all vying for the top position as the best joke teller. If it wasn't Tina Fey, who also wrote the thing, that had you in fits of laughter, it was Tracy Jordan killing it somewhere else. To top it all off, you then have Alec Baldwin, showing the world that he actually has the ability to be a full on comic actor rather than just a sometime stand-in host for Saturday Night Live. Nobody really knew what to expect for the final ever episode. We all knew it would be funny, but would they dare attempt to insert any emotion into what is usually an absurd cacophony of tomfoolery? To the surprise of everyone, we actually got a bit of both. One minute we have a surprisingly emotional affair waving goodbye to our favourite characters, and the next we swiftly return to the unreal as we witness an old age Kenneth at the helm of NBC along with flying cars. Number 2. Breaking Bad there was a lot of pressure on Breaking Bad to deliver a perfect ending. It was seen as the best show on earth and a show that deserved an ending to complete its perfect legacy. Thankfully, the show did what it was supposed to and the finale ended up being much better than anyone could have ever anticipated. It was difficult to imagine what to expect in the final episode. Walter White had a lot of things to do. Incredibly, he managed to pretty much do everything he needed to, from making sure his family was taken care of to patching things up with sidekick Jesse Pinkman. Walter White was the beating heart of Breaking Bad, therefore it seemed only natural for him to die. We all knew it was coming, we just didn't know how it was going to happen. When the time finally came, we were all prepared. It wasn't a shock, it wasn't sad, it was more of a relief. The best television show in the world had come to an end, and we were here to witness it. Number 1. Six Feet Under if instruction manuals existed for how to write the perfect ending, then the finale of Six Feet Under should be the number one example. Alan Ball's exceptional five-season smash hit is one of the best television dramas to have ever hit screens and is responsible for near enough every serial drama that came after it. 
Without Six Feet Under, we wouldn't have had the majority of Netflix originals that we have today. Although every single episode is special in its own right, it is the ending that really demonstrates what the show is about. Death. As the minutes go by, we know that the episode is leading up to something special, but what could it be? Surely not another main character's death? They have already dropped that bombshell with the passing of main character Nate early on in the season. Instead, we are treated to a seven minute montage that flashes forward to the deaths of every single main character. It seems so obvious, yet we had no idea it was coming. Accompanied by the now iconic song of Sia's Breathe Me, the montage was everything that we could have ever wanted from a finale. Just thinking about it brings me to tears. <sighs> oh, okay, well, there you are, the 10 most satisfying TV endings, but let us know your favourite down in the comments below. If you liked this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, click that subscribe button as well as the little bell icon to be notified of any new videos coming your way. But for now, I have been Kirsten Rhea from What Culture, and I'll see you in the next video.